Can I thank the Business and Trade Committee, which recently published a report including some recommendations for government regarding Horizon Redress. We will, of course, respond to them in the usual way, but today I would like to address two of the recommendations which they make. The first is that responsibility for redress should not lie with the Post Office, that it should be subject to independent oversight. This has also been something recommended to us by the Horizon Compensation Advisory Board. I can announce today that we will be the Department for Business and Trade, rather than the Post Office, which will be responsible for delivery of this redress, which is relating to the overturning of these convictions. Final decisions on redress will be made by independent panels or independent individuals. I shall return to the House at a later date with your permission, Mr Speaker, to provide details on how we intend to deliver redress for those who have had their convictions overturned by this Bill or via subsequent measures taken in Scotland and Northern Ireland. We are discussing these details with the advisory board. My honourable friend, friend, the Financial Secretary to the Treasury, will be introducing legislation to make any payments made via this new scheme that are exempt from tax. The Select Committee also recommended that the Government should introduce legally binding timeframes to deliver redress for sub-postmasters with financial penalties for non-compliance. And I strongly support the Committee's desire to speed up redress. We feel their proposed re regime would have the opposite impact. It would mean potentially imposing penalties on forensic accountants or others who are helping postmasters to prepare their claims. Doing that would probably cause some of them to withdraw from this work, which would slow down the delivery of redress. Furthermore, we do not want to be in a position where we are rushing postmasters into major decisions about their claims and the offers they receive, possibly meaning some are timed out of redress altogether. The advisory board have said that their strong view is that this would be a backward step, and which is why less than two months ago we passed legislation removing the arbitrary deadline from the GLO scheme. We do not want to reverse that change. However, the government is acting to ensure that redress is delivered as quickly as possible. First, we are working with claimants' lawyers to reduce the number of cases which require expert evidence, for example, forensic accountants or medical evidence, which, do, which does delay claims. We will pilot this approach, and assuming that the pilots succeed, we hope to expand it rapidly. Second, the Advisory Board and I have asked for monthly reports on each scheme. These will come from independent case managers for schemes where they are in place, we will publish those reports, which will give us the best basis on which to assess measures for speeding up redress. Finally, we are introducing optional fixed sum awards. In January, the Government announced it would introduce an offer of an optional £75,000 fixed sum award for those in the Group Litigation Order Scheme. As of the 5th of March, 110 offers have been accepted, and over 100 of these have taken the £75,000 fixed payment. Of those who have accepted the fixed payment, three quarters are new claims. So the fixed offer has already meant that over 100 claims have been resolved very promptly. In some cases, those people will have got more than they would have asked for. The fixed offer also has had a helpful effect, helpful effect on other claims. It substantially reduces work on small claims by claimants' lawyers making more resource available to, prog to progress larger claims more quickly. I am pleased to announce today that the £75,000 fixed sum award offer will also now be extended to the Horizon shortfall scheme to ensure that everyone across all the schemes is treated fairly. Those who have already settled their claim below £75,000 will be offered a top-up to bring their total redress to this amount. This means over 2,000 postmasters will benefit quickly from this announcement. We are mindful that claims in the GLO scheme are not being submitted as swiftly as we would like to see. To ensure that we get help to claimants more quickly, we have already announced an optional fixed sum award of £75,000. I can announce today that anyone who chooses not to take that offer but instead submits a full claim for individual assessment will straight away have their interim payment topped up to £50,000. Mr Speaker, 
Many postmasters' lives have been ruined by this scandal. We are working hard to deliver redress. We have set up the Williams Inquiry, which will discover the truth. We will provide fair financial redress as promptly as we can, and we will exonerate those who were so unjustly convicted of crimes which they did not commit. Mr Speaker, I commend this statement to the House. Shall the Minister Russia not Thank you, Mr Speaker. I thank the Minister for advance sight of his statement. Before I begin my response, I'd like to put on the record my deep disappointment at the Minister's comment this morning on BBC Breakfast. Uh, instead of categorically condemning the Tory party donor Frank Hester's horrific racist remarks about the right honourable member for Hackney North and Stoke Newington, and despite number 10, after much delay, finally describing the remarks as, I quote, racist and wrong, the Minister this morning appeared to contradict this position. Point four. Thank you, Mr Speaker. Mr Speaker, this is a statement on post office legislation, and may I respectfully say that what the Honourable Lady opposite is saying is irrelevant to this statement. Yeah, yeah, yeah. The Shadow Minister will moving on. Minister. I will move on. I will move on. Uh, I simply hope that the Minister will reflect, reflect on the reversal of the statement this morning and the position that he took that he would take a donation if it was submit, provided by the donor. I hope he reflects on the impact that, that it is having on many of us. Turning to Mr Speaker, uh, today's crucial statement. The Horizon scandal is truly shocking, a miscarriage of justice and one of the most devastating in British history. The scandal has brought devastation to the lives of hundreds of falsely convicted sub-postmasters. Over 20 years on, they and their families are still suffering from the consequences and the trauma of all they have been put through. I pay tribute to their determination in pursuing justice and I want to pay tribute to Alan Bates and the sub-postmasters who have pioneered this campaign and worked tirelessly to seek justice. Without their bravery and perseverance, the campaign would not have come be where it is today. I also want to pay tribute to my right honourable friend, the member for North Durham, uh, for all his work and the campaigning on this issue by Lord Arbuthnot for many years, as well as uh, others in this House and the other House. And members of the Business Select Committee and the Chair. Turning to the legislation, we, of course, welcome the laying of this legislation today. Uh, but before, before giving a full verdict on the legislation, we will need to uh, properly scrutinise the details and analyse its potential impacts. In the first instance, Mr Speaker, this legislation does, in our view, leave a series of outstanding issues and questions as to when justice and compensation will be delivered and to whom. First, I'd like to address the territorial scope uh, of the legislation, as it is currently only applying to England and Wales, uh, even though the post office uh, is not devolved and the Horizon scandal is a UK-wide uh, Horizon system, uh, and the scandal uh, in terms of its impacts is UK-wide. Um, we know there are 30, approximately 30 cases that need overturning between Scotland and Northern Ireland, uh, but there remains a, seri a, a series of outstanding questions as to when sub-postmasters in both Scotland and particularly Northern Ireland will receive justice and com compensation. I welcome the Minister's uh, offer of and assurances of having regular uh, dialogue with the devolved administrations, but I'd be grateful if he could provide more, more detail on how that will work in practice, recognising uh, the, the different legal processes. Um, Mr Speaker, additionally, as we know, 80% of the redress budget is yet to be paid out. There remains considerable uncertainty as to when sub-postmasters will receive their compensation. I'm sure we can all agree that the sub-postmasters have waited long enough. The delays are causing further financial distress and further suffering. We note the, the Business and Trade com Select Committee's recommendation of a legally binding time frame from when an offer is first tabled to when settlement is reached. Even if these legally binding targets are not adopted, what assurances can the Minister give that he will meet his target of ensuring all compensation is paid out, is out of the door by the end of the year? What mechanisms will the Minister put in place 
to ensure that there are no further delays. And, and I know that he is committed to making sure there are no further delays, but sub-postmasters will want to know that that actually happens. And given the recent chaos in the post office's leadership, we welcome the decision to take the post office out of the redress process. As the minister said, redress must have an independent, have independent oversight. We know the post office is in disarray. And what we need is focus and efficiency in ensuring compensation is paid to the most postmasters as soon as possible. In conclusion, Mr. Speaker, the suffering of the sub postmasters can never come close to being repaid just through financial redress, though it is so important we get this right. The very least the government can do is ensure they receive the fair compensation and exoneration as soon as possible. There are those who've been impacted by the scandal that have sadly passed away, never to be able to see their innocence proven, proven or live to see the compensation they deserve. It is absolutely vital that the government acts with the urgency and speed that's needed to correct this terrible injustice. Well, thank you, Mr. Speaker. If I can, see as the comments the Shadow Minister made are on the record, if I can just deal with them very briefly, uh, Mr. Speaker, and I've got to say it's the second time I think she's made comments at this dispatch box that have been unfair or factually incorrect. And I hope she doesn't come and correct the record, because if she actually watched the interview I made, I absolutely did condemn the words of Mr Hester. I said they were wrong, I said they were, ra they were racist, and I think it's absolutely right he's apologised, and she should actually watch the full broadcast, and I hope comes back to this House and apologises and corrects the record. In terms of the points she raises, um, I think they largely pertain to the Scottish and Northern Ireland devolved administrations. I quite understand the concern around that and I'm very keen to make sure we get this right across the United Kingdom. I think, as she says in her own comments, they have different legal processes she acknowledges in those areas. Therefore, we think it would be inappropriate for us to legislate for parts of the United Kingdom that have different legal processes, different prosecutors. Justice itself is devolved, although the post office, as she rightly says, is a national organisation, UK-wide organisation. That's why we think the legislation should be we allow those devolved administrations to legislate themselves if that's what they choose to do. And we're very closely with them on a weekly basis. Officials are meeting on a weekly basis to assist wherever we can to make sure this is delivered, the compensation can be delivered UK-wide, as is uh, how the scheme operates. I think she said, and I may be wrong here, so I will check the record myself, that uh, I think she says 80% of compensation is yet to be delivered. Can I just say, across the whole, all the schemes, around two-thirds of cases have already received full and final compensation, although in that being the case, some people will be topped up, about 2,000 people will be topped up by the announcement I made earlier, the £75,000. So it's not right to say that the majority of people are waiting for compensation, as I think she said. Um, in terms of do we want to deliver by the end of the year, absolutely we do. I'll just point out to her, as I said in my remarks, not everything is within our gift. We can't compel a claimant to submit a claim or when that will happen. So if somebody puts in a, a claim right towards the end of the year, for example, it may not be possible to do that for the end of the year. So not everything is within our gift. Anything that is, we're very keen to expedite. In terms of independent oversight, absolutely critical that we have that. In the overturned conviction schemes, all schemes have independent oversight. In the overturned conviction schemes, we have uh, retired High Court Judge Sir Gary Hickenbottom, um, and on that scheme particularly, we, we have the £600,000 fixed sum award, but also on Mr Hickenbottom's advice, we've introduced the £450,000 payment as soon as a full claim has been submitted. So, uh, so we're doing everything we can to make sure people are compensated as quickly as possible. Paul Scully. Well, the Post Office well. Minister Kevin Hollenrake there uh, introducing a law into the House of Commons aimed at quashing the wrongful conviction of sub postmasters caught up in the Horizon IT scandal. Uh, the hope is that uh, as those convictions can be speedily quashed, then the compensation payments can also be speeded up to the many, many people who have been affected by that. He did point out that it will mean that some people who are guilty will have their convictions quashed, but he said that, that is a price 
worth paying and that the government will mitigate any financial redress to, to these people. Uh, also, of course, important to note that this is just for England and Wales only, not affecting those in Scotland and Northern Ireland, and confirming that the payments that the uh, government eventually does make will be tax-exempt.